to Classics Confidential and today it's another digital classics interview because I'm here with the founders of a brand new blog that actually went live only this morning, didn't it? Um, would you like to introduce yourselves? Go ahead, Francis. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Um, I'm Lottie Parkin and I am a PhD student at King's College London um, and yes, uh, we are co-founders of Classics Classics Closet. I was about to say Classics Closet confidential then, but Classics Closet. Uh, Jared Looney, I'm also a PhD student at Royal Holloway. And, uh, what do you work on? Tell us a little bit about what you work on. Well, my research is currently conducting an existential analysis of Euripides' Hippolytus and adaptation. Basically, I'm just trying to prove that character studies are a valid way to look at ancient myths. You don't have to look for a deep political meaning. Sometimes plays are just interesting because characters are interesting. Okay. And I um, am also um, kind of receptionist as such. And um, it doesn't sound as ex exotic <laughs> as uh, <laughs> uh, um, I look at um, fragments of ancient drama and how modern playwrights recreate them or use them as inspiration for new productions. Wow, it sounds like we've got two whole new classics confidential interviews that we could film with you guys, but <laughs> now we're going to talk about this, this blog, and I mean you mentioned that you're interested in reception studies, and that's kind of part of what the blog's about, isn't it? Because you tell me. Um, well, it came about that Jared and actually myself are um, kind of involved in lots of different projects together, and I think that started because our supervisor is the same supervisor for our Which is your supervisor? Uh, Edith Hall. Right, she's been on Classics Confidential as well. She yeah. has, um, and Jared and I met, got a good few years ago, yeah. Yeah, now, and um, various projects have come our way, and we're both very passionate about how Classics comes across to people, and um, getting it out into the wider um, world, and... Um, yeah, and so we've done various things like the Save Classics campaign at Royal Holloway. Mm -hmm. That was very high profile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, we spent the whole summer of 2011 um, and autumn mm -hmm. um, doing various things like writing letters to people. And um, actually, that's probably where some of the information comes from is the fact that mm -hmm. with the Classics Closet, we are looking at celebrities and people who are in high profile positions mm -hmm. uh, who have done classics or Latin or Greek. And um, yeah, we trawled through so much doc documentation and mm. internet sites and email addresses trying to find people who were in these positions of authority who had to come classics so mm -hmm. we could get weight behind the campaign. Right, um, right. But this is the Save Classics campaign. Yeah. So maybe so this is part of the kind of genesis of yeah. Classics Closet. It really is yeah. because we started looking at people like J.K. Rowling and Boris Johnson and Stephen Fry for support mm -hmm. for what we were doing and then we just had this massive pile of people mm -hmm. and we thought well, this will be a waste if we don't think something with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also a combination of other factors oh, yeah. as well. Um, Jared and I also were a part of um, Chef Fest, the Festival of Matron Drama nice. in Sheffield, which was this summer, mm -hmm. um, where we did a lot of outreach with um, kids and local people in Sheffield, and we brought a big production of Prometheus Bound, or Prometheus Chained, as yeah. it's known. Um, and so um, we were working on that, and we've done loads of other things together, and I think where this actual thing started was myself sitting on a train mm -hmm. coming into London and picking up the Metro newspaper. Mm -hmm flicking through some pages and come across an interview with um, Tom Hiddleston, who is the actor who plays Loki in um, the Avenger movie, movies right, okay. and yeah. War and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And he actually says in this interview that he did classics at Cambridge mm -hmm. and how he feels that um, the kind of modern superhero, superheroes are the kind of Greek and Roman gods and, and it was I was completely blown away with that bit of information. Mm. So as you do in this day of technology, you take a picture and send it around to your friends and say, random fact of the day, he was a yes, yes, yes. who would have thought? And you put it up on Facebook. Uh, it came to me, so I decided, you know, I'm gonna share this with people and uh, had a little blurb, mm. and just a few lines, and then people started getting engaged with it. Like people wanted to talk about this more. And so I started thinking of ways we could go about possibly doing this. Well, not we. At that point, it was just me. Mm -hmm. And I thought about doing blog or podcast or, you know, just something. And then Lottie and I started to talk about it, really. And we realized that there was an audience. And there were so many people that 
you wouldn't think of as classicist, even if they are, you know, like Hiddleston, out and proud about it, yeah. they aren't in the, uh, the common knowledge, as it were. Academics no. will know, but... No, but when people think about classicists, I mean, Boris Johnson springs to mind. Yeah. The people you, you mentioned, really, but others, I imagine, are, are slightly more surprising. Yeah, yeah um, very obscure people, actually. In, in, since we sat down and kind of discussed what we were going to do and how we were going to deliver classics closet as such, uh, it, it was um, a real eye-opener, some of the people we found. And, and what about the people that... Um, that you expect to read the blog and follow it? What's your audience? Well, right now, we know that most of the audience is going to come from within the field. It's hard not to. Um, ultimately, though, we're hoping that most of the people who are engaging with this aren't classicists, because that's, that's preaching to the choir. Mm -hmm. While, at the same time, it's nice to you know, teach your, your students that you don't have to become an academic mm -hmm. if you're a classicist. Um, at the same time, it's showing younger people that you can go out, you can study Latin, you can study Greek, and you don't have to sit, as it were, in a dusty old corner reading a book all the time. So, <laughs> Which is kind of where the classics closet idea came from. Okay. It's the okay. fact that um, it, it's, it seems like, and I know a lot of people will disagree with this, mm. but classics sometimes does get put in that kind of dusty old box um, in the middle of kind of back of the cupboard a little bit, but yeah. that, that subject area sure. which if you're not involved in it and you're not actively engaging with it, people don't want to kind of admit that it's kind of cool. I mean, we want to keep it fun and yeah. we want to keep it, um, and we, we said that, for example, if we do come across things that not people, people are not necessarily going to go, oh, I know what that is or that mm -hmm. kind of myth or that story, we'll find like a a link to it. Contextualise it. it. So, so yeah. you are learning as long yeah. as you're going along with it. Yeah, but it, did, it just struck me that this would be a, it would be a good resource for scholars as well because so many people are interested in classics in popular culture. Yeah. But in actual fact, even if you don't kind of go the whole hog and do an analysis of Dylan's use of Ovid, for instance, you know, the fact that you're documenting which sort of elements of classical culture are being drawn on, which text, you know, it's going to be you know, cumulatively, it will, I think it will be a, a very useful resource as well as being fun and, right. you know. Yeah, no, but that's what we wanted. We wanted, because yeah. we were saying there are all these sites out there that at the moment are doing things like yourselves, fantastic that you are engaging people with subject matter that not necessarily they would automatically get. I think, I think it's brilliant. And then you have um, publicity for classics departments who will name people like Boris Johnson mm -hmm. and, and people like that. So um, for us, it was, it was kind of it's a great idea to have like this, everything in one place. Yeah. And ultimately, we don't know how the blog will go. We, we're very kind of, yes, we want to get it out there. We want to um, we have our own kind of ideas on where it will be going in the next two years, but things can change, things will adapt, um, and so we never know. We might have people who will come in and talk about, I don't know, architecture in London and, mm -hmm. and, and famous architect that took inspiration from the classics or something mm -hmm. like that, which will be bringing a bit more of the academic into it as well. So, yeah. um, Oh, that sounds great. And if people have ideas of their own about any people who might be featured or, or, or feedback in general, can, can they get in touch with you? Is there yeah, I mean, if, there's, if they want to feedback on the posts themselves, the comments are always enabled. Mm -hmm. um, but if they specifically want to contact us about anything in general, they can email us at editor at classicscloset.com. Okay. So um, that can be to say, I want to contribute, which we are hoping to get people who are engaged in it in a, a different element than we are, or if they just want to say, you know, thanks for what you're but doing. But it has to be famous, right? No, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll take anyone. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's also really lovely because we've had people already getting in contact saying it's a great idea and they're always supportive of us and it's even suggesting ideas of where we can go with it. Um, obviously, for the next kind of couple of weeks, we want to kind of to see how people respond to it and um, keep our, what our basic idea is at the mm -hmm. moment, but we are quite open to development. Mm. Well that's the beauty of online as well, that things can be, they very, change very organically and I remember when we started the Classics mm -hmm. Confidential we had this, well it was a particular font that I thought was great, but lots of people were saying you know, we can't really <laughs> read what it says and so that, it's something you can change immediately yeah. and I think you know, more conventional formats like 
you know, what texts, written texts, for instance, you know, you, you just can't do, you can't move so fast, mm -hmm. so you move so quickly. So um, that I mean that all sounds great. Good luck with it. It's really looking forward to seeing the first post would be on the first the, official post, yeah, yeah, as it were, the the first outing. Outing yeah. will be on the fifteenth. On the fifteenth of, of November. November, November um, yeah. Um, and it will always be on the 1st and the 15th of um, every month. Okay. And we'll make sure there's at least two that go out. Once on the 1st, once on the 15th. You could do a good one on April the 1st. Oh yeah, we're going to have We have, we have, we have actually pretty much lined up what we're going to do in the next couple of months. Um, and so, we're, and we're tying it in with lots of um, dates and things that are happening in the world at the time. Oh, so, um, yeah. so not necessarily will be out of the realm of Perfect. Oh, well, thank you very much for talking to us on the, the first day of this brand new blog. So we'll, we'll put a link to it on the on our website so people can access it Brilliant. easily and have a look. Excellent. Okay. So thank you.